Welcome to our daily manna. Just as our body is in need of material food, so as our soul is in need of the word of the Lord. So we bow down our heads for prayer. Lord, here is another day that you have given to us for us to learn more of you, to meditate upon your word. And right at this moment, we pray that you would speak to us, that we may be able to grasp the principles coming from your word, your truth, and help us to stand by this truth in our day-to-day life. May we not compromise our faith in you, our walk with Jesus, and help us to live this out that the world will see what it means to be a child of God. Thank you for this moment that we have. Anoint us with your presence and with your power, with your wisdom. In your name we pray. Amen and Amen. Now, my two children are here with me this very day because there is a question that I would ask them. Only one question that I have not rehearsed with them about this matter. I just grabbed them from their playtime and I told them that I'll be asking them a question. And with all their hearts, they'll answer me honestly. Here is the question, kiddos. What would you feel if mommy would leave us for a work abroad? Uh, sad. You feel sad. Why? Because I don't have a mommy anymore in the Philippines. Will you allow her? Yes, yeah, so she can make more money to buy me more toys. So you would allow her even if you feel sad. How about you? What would you feel? Completely very sad. <laughs> Completely very sad. Will you allow her? A yes little. No? <laughs> A little? Yes or no? Yes. You will still allow her. But I think your mom won't, won't allow that to happen. Well, thank you kiddos for answering me. I know when it's for real, you won't allow your mom to go or live, okay? I know you would do that. But for this, the disciples of Jesus were feeling bad about the situation because the Lord was not only predicting to them this time that he is going to die. His death already took place. He already resurrected. So when he died, they were all very sad about the incident. They lost their hope. And then they started uh, maybe pondering about what's going to happen to us. And yet when the resurrection took place, they were all rejoicing about the matter. Well, at first they did not believe it. But when Jesus presented to them all the possibility, not only possibility, but all the evidences that he is indeed alive, that he resurrected, then their hearts were filled with joy and they started celebrating but their celebration did not last for so long. Why? Because Jesus, again, for the second time, told them that he is living. And this time, in the text that we will read, Jesus was living already, ascending to the heavens. And this is what it says in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up, while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky, while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. This is a sad scenario that you were already rejoicing because the Savior that you have put your faith on resurrected already, and yet he won't stay with you for so long because he left already, he ascended into the heavens. While they were gazing at the sky, Jesus disappeared and then suddenly there were two men in white clothing. Now, the Bible often used this kind of expression to describe about heavenly beings, especially angels. So this time, most probably, these two men that stood beside them 
were angels. And listen very carefully to what the angels said. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? Well, all of these disciples, if this was pertaining to the eleven, all of these disciples were literally Galileans. That's why he addressed them, men of Galilee. Only Judas Iscariot came from Judea. Only him was not a Galilean. And so the eleven were all Galileans and they were addressed by these probably angels telling them that this the same Jesus who has been taken up from them into the heavens, he will in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven, come back. Now take note, there are two important matters that I would like to leave you with. First is that the manner of Jesus coming is described here by the angels. First is that his manner of coming, he will come just as how he ascended. Meaning to say, he will appear in the sky as well. And this is consistent with write, the writings of the Apostle Paul when he told about the believers being caught up into the air to meet with Jesus. And this is how Jesus Christ would come back. But more than that is the certainty, this is the second one, the certainty of Jesus coming. You know, some people would be worried about someone living. I believe my two children, when I asked them earlier, maybe they are saying that we will allow her uh, just for her to find a job or to work or to do whatever that God would like her to do. But in reality, I believe these two wouldn't allow their mom. And I think their mom won't allow that as well to be part, to be uh, away from them. Well, the disciples were feeling that as well. But the greatest comfort that a person who is living can give to those who are left behind is a promise of the certainty of his return. And Jesus did that for you and for me, not only for his disciples. There is a certainty, 100%, Jesus Christ is coming back. And we as the bride of Christ, we as the church, if you are a believer, a follower of Jesus, you are considered to be a part of the bride of Christ. And we must be ready for His coming because His coming is not only imminent, it's certain. And I am praying that when Jesus Christ comes back, we would all be with Him forever. And let's all be excited about that event. This world will not last forever. God would eventually destroy this and will reconstruct a new heaven and a new earth. And in that particular beautiful place, those who believed in Jesus, those who committed their lives to Him, will reign with Him until forever. Well, if you are suffering today from anything, do not think that this is the end of it all. Because Jesus, who has a promise of His return with certainty, has also promised that He will bring us along with Him will reign with our Master until forever. So the sufferings that we are going through today can never be compared with the glory that is awaiting for you. Keep trusting Jesus, and as you wait for His return, prepare yourself all the time. Always be ready for His coming. God bless you all, and have a wonderful time within this day.